Moses was just an ordinary man. He was a prisoner down in Egypt land. But God made a way for Moses to leave. Cause he had a job to do. God called Moses on a mountain so high. With a voice like thunder, Moses closed his eyes. God said to Moses, this is my plan. He must let my children go. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Hand. And he said, go back down to Egypt land. Tell King Pharaoh, this is my plan. You must let my children go. If you will not listen to my command, then you have the power with that rod in your hand. So go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh again. You must let my children go. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. How can Pharaoh free my children now? Moses led the children to the edge of the sea. There was no way out, it was plain to see. With Pharaoh coming with his mighty men. Moses called upon God again. Well, the thunder rolled and the sky grew dark. And God came down as a pillar of fire. He parted the waters with a mighty wind. Moses and the children just walk right on in. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Tell King Pharaoh, free my children now. Go down, Moses, to Egypt land. Tell King Pharaoh, free my children now. All right, that was a good old timey song there. It's an only oldie, but it's a goodie. Phil Turner here again. I haven't been up in a while, and uh, I would invite you today not to turn your dial. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit about Jesus, we're going to do a Sunday school lesson. Uh, I would ask you, uh, at this time, if you died today, where would you spend eternity? Are you sure you would go to heaven? If you're not, why don't you listen to this? We're going to do the lesson, which is about going and telling, and, and uh, that's kind of what I'm doing today. It's not kind, it's what I'm doing today. I want to bring this message, but at the end, if you have never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm going to give you an opportunity Actually, I'm not giving you anything. I'm going to put it before you how to accept him and know that you're saved. Amen. So we'll, uh, we'll get into our lesson, Go and Tell. And this lesson is about obeying God's call to tell others about Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm trying to do here today. So uh, I know that when I'm up here, I'm pretty serious uh, on the screen and all. That's because this is very serious business. Uh, Jeff can tell you that uh, I cut up a lot other than something like this because this is so serious. It's your life, it's your soul, and eternity we're talking about. So, yeah, I won't be doing much of kidding today. So, what we're talking about, uh, again, this particular guy that wrote this lesson, I'm going to read it, read it to you. I'm not a minister. I'm, a, I'm an inactive deacon this year, the way we do ours at our church, and I'm a teacher at times. But anyway, this fellow says, while serving as a missionary in Medellin, uh, Colombia, in South America, he went on an evangelistic trip that required him to fly 
from the city airport to a small mountain village where he spent the night. Then he rode a bus on a mountain uh, road for about 45 minutes. Then he got off and rode a horse for another three hours. I mean, that's talking about getting in there where uh, nobody's heard the word from it. Uh, the night before he left that area, a young man named Jacobo found his way to where he was holding services. Uh, he wanted to know if I knew a God of love. I shared the gospel with him, and he accepted Jesus as his Savior. See, he had never heard, didn't even know anything about him. Now, here's the question. Was it an accident that Jacobo and I met? <clears throat> Does God orchestrate appointments? How many coincidences have you seen in your life that really weren't coincidences at all. Uh, this lesson explores these matters, but it also reminds you you need to cooperate with God and get this message out to others. Now, I'm talking about people that are saved at this point. You need to be available to bring God's truth to a world that desperately needs to hear it, and if there's ever a truth, that's it. Reading out of Acts 8, 26 through 29, and I don't have it memorized, so i got to look down at it. I apologize. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he rose and went, because God told him to. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopia, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. For well, this man had a high position in that government at that time. Now, he's over all the the treasury and probably everything else, uh, right hand kind of. Uh, he was returning and sitting in his chariot, uh, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, said, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. So God intentionally wants all people to spend eternity with him, and, and that's true. God created us for himself, and, and the Bible tells us that. He loves every one of us, whether you believe it or not. He loves every one of us, and he wants us to love him back and follow his commands and do, do what he says. And if you do, you know, then you're pleasing God. He wants to give us meaning and purpose in this life, and you can read about that in John 10.10 10, if you want to make some notes and read later. He sent his son who died on the cross for our sins to make it possible to be reconciled to him. As his people, we are representatives in the world. Now, that's a fact. It is through the Holy Spirit's leadership in our lives and our obedience to him that God places us in positions to share with those who are seeking the truth and even those who aren't seeking it but might be open to it. That's all I'm asking you today. If, if, uh, if you poo-poo this and just say, I'm not watching that, that's your choice. You have a free will. That's part of what all this is about. We have a free will that he gave you when you were born into this world. And you can accept Jesus or you can not accept him. But you need to accept because where are you going to spend your eternity? Have you ever given it any thought? Everybody's got eternal life right now, but it's a matter of where you're going to spend it. That's right out of the Bible. If you don't think you believe the Bible, listen to me here a few minutes and bear with me. We see no clearer example of this than in the verses on, on uh, who might be open to this. While preaching in Samaria, Philip had seen a great movement of God. People listened attentively to him, and seeing healing miracles took place, and even some demon-possessed people were set free from their spiritual bondage. Uh, see Acts 8, 4 through 8 on that. It was the type of awakening preachers today long to see, yet few do. Then, despite the overwhelming response of the people, the angel of the Lord instructed Philip to leave and go south down a desert road. Now, does this strike you as strange? That's just a theoretical question, because he had a big crowd there, you see, but he'd been preaching there and bringing the message for days. In verse 29, Luke used the more common expression, the spirit, when describing the source of his instructions. Philip immediately followed God's leading. Philip acted in total faith. He could not have known God was arranging for one man from a different country, race, and culture to meet him on that road. No way would he know he was there.
The Greeks and Romans considered Ethiopia to be the end of the, Ethiopia to be the end of the earth. This would climax the Acts 1-8 commission to be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the world. That's why we have missionaries, and not just us, a lot of the different denominations, a lot of different uh, organizations have missionaries all over the world where they are allowed. I had a Gideon speaker a week or two ago. There's some countries where they can visit now, but they cannot hand out the Bible. It's not allowed. But see, you have a choice. You can either accept or, or reject, but you can have a Bible laying on your table or one in each room and read it all you want. A lot of people don't have that opportunity, just making that point. I've seen a few of those countries in my military service. God cared greatly about this man and went out of his way to make sure he understood the truth about Jesus. <clears throat> he held a position of stature, as we said. He was a man of great authority under Queen Candace, Queen Mother of the Ethiopians. Since he'd been to Jerusalem to worship, he must have heard of the God of the Jews. Apparently, he was a seeker of the truth. He wanted to know more. As people seek the truth, God provides a way for them to receive it. If you don't even care and not listening, you know, you may never hear it. In other words, the Lord honors the efforts of those who seek him. Excuse me. The man was returning. As he sat in his chariot, he read Isaiah the prophet, as we said. G told Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. He meant go down there to it, and, and Philip obeyed. Today, nearly four billion people have not been reached through the gospel of Christ. Four billion. Can you imagine like Philip, we need to answer God's call even when he takes us to remote places. And believe me, some of our missionary people go to some remote places. God cares about the many, that's for sure. But he also cares about the one. If you doubt this, reflect on his love and work in your own life. Now we're going to talk about some scripture here, Acts 8, 30 through 35. And I'm, I'm kind of rushing along today because we've got some other stuff. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And that's the way they spoke in those days. And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. He invited him up. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. In other words, Jesus died for our sins. And this man was seeking information. He wanted to know these things. So he had obtained a copy and was reading of the scriptures and reading the prophet Isaiah aloud when Philip told him. Philip was so familiar with the scriptures that he immediately recognized the passage that this treasury official was reading. Understandest thou what thou readest, Philip asked. And he knew there was a real difference in just reading and understanding. Now, if you're serious about trying to read your Bible, and my pastor said this many times, as well as many, many other uh, well-known pastors and people in the Gospels. If you want to learn that Bible, you read it. If you don't understand, you read it again. But the big thing is you ask God to help you understand. And I think you will find, as I have, as you do that, you'll learn more and more every time you read. Uh, you may read the same passage several times a year. But as you go along you're going to pick up more and more information out of that. It's not a mystery. It's just that he wants us to read and understand it. Uh, the difference in the language and the way they talk and spoke and where they put their verbs and nouns and all in that day certainly was different. Uh, if we went into some of our uh, speech stuff today, like my drawl or maybe some rap or something like that, then they, they wouldn't have any idea what we were doing either. Yeah, we got to look at it and read it more than once. Now, the man went on to say something else that gave us in, uh, additional insight into the mind and heart of someone who doesn't fully understand the spiritual truth. 
He desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him and instruct him. People likely are hungrier for spiritual truth than we realize as Christians. This was a divine appointment. God had strategically placed Philip right where he wanted him to be. See, and that's over one man. But we don't know what that one man could accomplish. When he went back to his country, who knows how many people might be saved by what he learned, that one man that day. The whole word of God points to Jesus. Adrian Rogers once said the Bible is a hymn book, H-I-M. It's about him, it's about Jesus from cover to cover, and that's true. Apparently, without hesitation and with clarity and boldness, Philip opened his mouth and began to sing scripture and preach Jesus to him. Do you know how to preach Jesus with similar clarity, confidence, and boldness? We don't all, and some do uh, to a better degree than others, but God uses all types of people. You don't have to be uh, highly educated with a bunch of degrees. Uh, some people are very just natural good speakers, and if they trust God as their Savior, they can, uh, they can do just as well as someone with a high education. God uses sometimes the lowliest people like the shepherds. He didn't hold a press conference and announce uh, Jesus' birth uh, in the city. He spoke to a bunch of lowly shepherds out on the hillside there, and at that time, they were considered about the lowest element of society. Nobody even wanted to be around it, but they had a job to do. Jesus announced Jesus' birth to them first. What about that? So he uses all of us. Never feel like you're not worthy, because you're worthy if you're saved, and God says you are, then you're worthy. And that is what he said. In the fabric of normal conversation, we simply relate what the Bible tells us about God's Son. As followers of Jesus, we should become familiar with the Word of God so that we can use it to point others to Christ. By studying the Bible with other believers also, we'll grow in our ability to use the Scriptures. Now, that means uh, going to church, going to prayer meetings, uh, paying attention and all. You learn more and more and more, and that's helpful. It's very, very helpful. Uh, number one, you just know more about God and Jesus, and you know more about how to go about trying to tell someone else about Jesus, what he's done for you. And by the way, that's one of the best testimonies there is in the world is to tell what God has done for you to somebody else. My own personal testimony you've heard before, but he sure uh, brought me out of the wilderness, so to speak, as a heavy drinker at one time. And he took that away entirely, and I love him for it. I appreciate him for it because it's just its a terrible thing when you get addicted, and that, that's basically what it is, is an addiction. So your personal thoughts on what God has done for you can really help in trying to get someone else to believe and someone to trust Jesus as their Savior. There's several things here it gives us about relating the good news of Jesus Christ to another person. God's love in John 3.16. Man's sin, Romans 3.23. The penalty of sin, Romans 6.23. Jesus' death, 1 Peter 3.18. God's desire in Isaiah 118. Salvation's opportunity, Romans 10, 9 through 10. Now, I know that's the fast you can't write all that down, but that's where it's at. Some believers are called of God to be missionaries in their own land. You know, we need missionaries here as well as, as other countries. There's many, many people in this country that haven't heard and, and don't get the opportunity to go to a church. We still got some uh, back corners and back roads in this country where people don't know. Other people are called to minister to people groups in various places around the world, and again, that's where we get our missionaries. All of us should help support our missionaries through prayer and giving. Now, I'm talking to Christian people, and I'm talking to not Christian people, but how are you going to give to a mission work uh, if you don't trust and believe Jesus? Probably not. But this is a starting point, not the finish line. You see, some Christians mistakenly think they've done their entire duty in sharing Christ when they pray and when they give to their church and mission. Now, that's not true because God commanded all of us to reach other people. If you just go and sit and go through the motions on Sunday morning, and that's the extent of your church for that week, 
that's better than nothing, but that's not enough, really, because he wants you to approach other people. When you get the opportunity, you have to approach a lot of people very differently and very carefully. I know that. There's people that don't even want to hear, people that will curse you and, and run you off. But nevertheless, we're still supposed to attempt and try because that's what he told us to do. He doesn't want anybody to die and go to hell. He doesn't want that. But you have a choice, you see, and that's what's so important about all this. You do have a choice. At one time in our society, the vast majority of children heard about God in their homes or at school, and even if they didn't go to church, they were still taught to revere Jesus and follow his teachings. Now, I know that to be true in my lifetime because at that time in your, in your school, even first grade on, I did go to school contrary to popular belief. Uh, in the first grade up, we had devotions every morning. That was the start of it. So, you know, you learned some there. Uh, if your parents took you to church, certainly that was good. You learned some there and so forth. Today, most people get their ideas about Jesus from a society that has accepted the myth of moral relativism, a belief that rules out any notion of Jesus being the only way to God. And that is the only way to God, by the way, but we've got all sorts of uh, things that they want to call religion and, and other beliefs that says there's more than one way to get there. My Bible says no. It says Jesus Christ died for our sins, and, and if you believe in him and trust him as your personal Savior, then you're going. You'll be able to go to heaven. If not, you're going to the worst place. Let's see what time I've got here. I've got to get ready. Now, as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? See, this man was seeking. He knew that, that he wasn't fulfilled. His life wasn't. He was seeking Jesus. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest, in other words, be baptized. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, that's, that's the biggie. That's the big belief. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were coming out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So you see, he was there for that one man, but no telling how many people that one man touched then in his life. The Ethiopian man had been reading a part of Isaiah that clearly pointed to the Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. It is no coincidence that God directed Philip to join him at that very moment. Philip obviously extended an invitation to this official to trust in Jesus. The Ethiopian responded favorably and desired to be baptized and did so. When people truly commit their lives to Christ, they want to obey him. I mean, why wouldn't? Being baptized is a beautiful act of obedience. It doesn't save you, but it signifies that you've accepted Jesus. It portrays the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus as well as death in one's own life and new birth under Christ's Lordship. And that's what they're talking about, being born again. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior and accept him and then turn and repent of what you've been doing, repent simply means to change your mind or change what you're doing. When you do trust him, then you are, are in the same place, and they call that born again because you're really throwing the old away and from that moment on starting the new. So that's basically what, what we're talking about here today is getting the gospel out to as many people as we possibly can. Now, I want to take just a moment. That's pretty much the end of the lesson there. What I want to do is take a moment or two and talk to you about accepting the Lord and Jeff may have a question or two here about some of the stuff at our particular church. There's no one church that you have to go to, but make sure it's a God-fearing, Bible-believing church, and you'll be okay. As far as if you're not saved today, and even if you say, well, I don't know, I'm not sure. Or what if you say, well, you know, I'm not really a bad person. I help this, and I do that. I try to be as good as I can. That's not good enough. It's only good enough after you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. 
and any good stuff you do, certainly, that's, that's wonderful. But you basically have to throw away the old stuff you were doing. So starting off in Romans 3.23, it says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, that means that all men are sinners. That started in the Garden of Eden when Eve and Adam were tempted and, and they messed up. That's modern English. They messed up. Now they're dead ones. So today, there wasn't death, by the way, until that time. So since that time there is a death and everybody's going, everybody has that date and that appointment to keep with the Lord. Uh, all you got to do is look at the obituary from babies up to 100-year-olds, everything in between. We're all going, and you certainly have had some family, friends, or someone that you've lost. I lost a dear brother-in-law, one of the finest men I've ever known, through the, right before the Christmas holiday. And I know he was the right kind of man. So I'm not concerned about where he is. We just miss him. But one of the finest fellows I ever met in my life. But anyway... That's, that's getting off the subject here a little bit. So we all have sinned. It, it isn't that be anything but a, uh, a bad thought. If some driver cuts you off and you snort and carry on, uh, you know, everybody's going to sin. And as far as big sin or little sin, it's all sin to God. So we all sin. Number one, you've got to accept that because he said so. And the penalty of sin, you know what that is? The penalty of sin it's death and hell if you're not saved. Death and hell. That's in Romans 6, 23. If you want to read that, it's right there in the Bible. Now, here's some of the good news. Very good news. Everybody ought to be smiling and uh, shouting and everything else on this. Jesus paid the penal penalty for his sin, for our sin on the cross. And that's Romans 5, 8. He paid all the costs. God loves us so much that rather than just wiping us out or sending everybody uh, to the wrong place, he sent Jesus. And if you trust that Jesus Christ died on that cross for your sin, and he did, everybody's sin, the past, present, and future. Kids are not even born yet. He did it all. If you want to believe that, it is true. And then in Romans 10, 13, if you will believe that and receive Christ, God will save you. You can read that for yourself. I paraphrase it a little bit. So let's summarize real quick. Everybody sins. There's no question about it. Now, some might say, well, I don't do that, but you're still not saved. The penalty of sin is death. But Jesus has paid the penalty for all of us. All we have to do is accept and believe, and you'll take a load off your shoulders, and you'll have eternal life with Jesus Christ and all those that have gone on before that have died with him, family, whoever. The next thing that I need to do is just ask you, if you're watching this right now and you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, it's this simple. Bow your head with me, and you pray and ask God to help you be willing and, and to receive him. Ask him to come into your heart ask forgiveness for all your sins and just say that I will change my ways. I will change the stuff I'm doing that I shouldn't. Lord, if you'll come into my heart and just receive Jesus. And if you're serious about it, you pray and thank the Lord right now that he has accepted you because if you pray that little simple prayer, that's all it takes, you're saved. Now, if you need uh, literature or somebody to talk to, uh, if this is brand new to you, I'm available. Jeff can tell you how to get in touch with me. This is Jeff's show. Jeff can tell you how to get in touch with me, or you can simply call Oakley Baptist Church. That's where myself and my wife and sister-in-law are, are members. Uh, that's not the only good church in town by any means, but it's a good church. So if you need me or want to talk or uh, just get a hold of the church, they can get me as well as Jeff. I will not put the number out at this time on the air because, you know, all kinds of people call at all times of night, and that would be all right if it's somebody who wants to hear about Jesus, but I'm afraid some of them wouldn't be. But anyway, I'm available. I'll talk to you. I'll visit with you. We'll do whatever's necessary to help you get started in the Christian life. So you have assurance of your salvations, by the way, 
Romans 10, 13 again, and 1 John 5, 11, and 12. It tells you. And tell other people about your salvation if you accepted Jesus. Now, I believe that Jeff's got some stuff that he wants to do or some questions to ask, and I'm going to finish up for the day. That was just a short lesson, but, you know, this could be the last chance that you ever have to accept Jesus. None of us know when we're going. Uh, give it some serious thought. I don't rain on. You have your own choice to make. And uh, Jesus would certainly love for you to come to him today. And, and it would just thrill me, tickle me good. I mean, every time somebody accepts the Lord, it's a biggie. They say the angels in heaven rejoice over one except you. So that's all I have. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. And if he's got some questions, I'll do my best. If not, I know he's got some stuff he's going to finish or do on his show today. Now, what, what's the hours of the church is it, uh, church services again, Wednesdays and Sundays? And well, Sunday, uh, quarter of 10, actually, the uh, Sunday, school Sunday school starts, school. and then like 10 of 11 is, is the worship service. So, you know, five or 10 minutes either way, I mean, it's still okay. And any of you that's not used to going, we have an open class in the uh, sanctuary that uh, Mr. Larry Dotson teaches there, and I fill in and, and teach about every other month with him. Uh, so if you don't know, if you want to come to church, you don't know exactly you know, what class you want to fit in. We've got some classes for everybody. But you can come in there and start, and we'll help you. Is the uh, food pantry still going over there? Or are y'all still uh, feeding the sheep and, and giving them the word and rejoicing with them? The food pantry is live and well and, and doing everything that they've been doing. I did not make it last week because I've got a little health thing going right now. I've been doing that right at, I think right at three years. But they're still feeding around three to 400 people a week. Someone called me a couple of weeks ago and actually complained because I had been telling the uh, numbers of folks that had been being helped. And uh, the whole purpose is not a deviant thing at all. It's just to let people know that bunches and bunches of people are in a hurting situation right now. And don't, don't let pride stand in your way. If your family's starving or if you personally need some food, then go over to these pantries and there. They've got that exactly right. See, that's another thing God commanded us to do. And when I say us, all of us, if you're Christian, is to help your fellow man. Now, there's many, many ways to do that. And right now, the food pantry is, is the one we've chosen to do. And there's quite a few people come. And a few of them are coming to church. That's not a requirement. You don't have to go to church so they get food. Uh, well, I, it, know, I it, know many of the Baptist churches are engaged in the help and then you know, and that's, they're open to anyone, but a lot of times it's the local community church body that comes out. But it, everybody's welcome to go to these places and get you some food. And yeah, now there's a, we have a government program as well as our church program. The government program has to be Buncombe County. That's not our rule, that's government rule. Right. Because, see, they have programs for all counties. Right. But the church food, if you're in a bind, they'll, they'll help you. I most likely will be back doing it as soon as I get one of my problems worked out. But it's it's a, a really good thing, and it's uh, they're opening the doors at 12 on Wednesday, and the food starts being given out at 12:30. Uh, volunteers are welcome, uh, especially on Tuesday. We've got a wonderful group of volunteers both days. They could use somebody with a truck on Tuesday to help get the food from Manor to the church. If anybody's out there listening that wants to do that, it'd just tickle us good. Well, then that, then that'd be fine, and if they want to do that, you can call me here at 828-216-6922, and uh, we'll let you talk with Mr. Turner, and uh, maybe you can end up helping them over there at the church in that pantry. Uh, and uh, it would be appreciated. Your neighbors would appreciate any effort you do on their behalf, and, and certainly we all would. And the thing about it is, see, we're not over there doing this like we're over there looking down on everybody. We know that other than the grace of God, any of us could be in that same position tomorrow or next week and that's the truth. So we're sincerely trying to help, but we want God to be seen in his help, not us. There's none of us over there volunteering to be seen. It's God. No, no, and, uh, and that, was, that was what I was trying to 
story saved us a minute ago. It wasn't about being seen. It's about doing what the Lord said to do. Yeah. And, doing. and it's about just general humanity. You know, it's not nice to sit there and see your neighbor hurting without food or the, you know, but they couldn't pay the power bill this month, things like that. And there's resources there for folks to use. So hopefully we're getting out and using it. That 211 number is still a good thing, especially if you're new in the area. They can uh, recommend several agencies you can go to for various problems, not just food. Right. It's a 211. So, yeah, anybody that wants to volunteer is welcome over there, too. But uh, come on if you need it. Ain't nobody going to look down their nose at you, I can tell you that. And we just, uh, we love people. We're concerned about people's souls. And we're just old people, too, man. We're all right. We're God's people. And so, uh, if you need to come by, swing on by, and we'll welcome you. I assure you that. And also in the church, if you want to try it. It's the friendliest, loveliest church that I've ever been in. I've been there several times. And, I mean, that wasn't that wasn't the church I went to growing up. So, to me, to go to any other church is something. But I really like it there. I felt comfortable. The folks was very nice. Uh, everybody offering to help or have a kind word for you. I did want to mention also that you are handicapped facilities there. You've got elevators in the church. You've got handicapped facilities for uh, the toilets used and things like that. So, there's And we have an elevator, Jeff. If you're handicapped and want to come visit, just park in the main lot, walk in the side door. You won't have to climb even one step. You, you'll be in right the sanctuary. Roll right yeah. to the elevator to get on, and yep. there's the preacher when you get out. It took us a while to get that. We worked at it, did all kind of things to, to pay for it, but we have a good elevator. We got a church bus. I sitting here, I don't know the limit of the miles they'll go in there, but if you need to ride to come to Oakland Baptist Church, call the church at 274, yeah, 3221, 274-3221. And see if they serve in your area. We'll do our best to get you and get you home after church. So you're very welcome. I guess all this rambling I'm doing is trying to say that. You're very welcome. And God loves you. And I want you to know that even if you don't believe it at this time. God does love you. And try him sometime. You'll see. Jeff, that's all I've got. If you gave me more questions, that's wonderful. If not, I know you have some stuff you wanted to do. Well, the rest of the show. Yeah, uh, we're uh, we're currently trying to uh, to get the public's awareness to uh, help us raise funds here for uh, URTV and the Western North Carolina Community Media Center. So we uh, we produced a donation trailer. I don't want to call it commercial since we're not commercial, but that's in essence it's an advertising service to raise donations, and we've really put in a lot of work and effort to it, and we hope people receive it well because it was not done with any intent to be bad or making light of Jesus or the Lord or anything. No, but I know we, you better do We that. do want it to uh, impact. We do hope that it can raise some money to uh, keep this facility open because there's wonderful things happening here in this facility. Not only the creative portion, but all the free speech aspects of it. You know, they make fun of days when they won't let Jimmy Swagger preach on a regular TV show. There may be a day when so-and-so can't get on there and preach the word. Well, this station is the last buffer before the country's gone, and if they lose free speech here, it'll be like Egypt. There's a lot of truth to that, Jeff, and the thing is, if I may comment on that, they've been very gracious to let us do an occasional program to present the gospel and the salvation plan. So I would ask anybody, uh, I'm not going to ask you for money. I'm just going to say if you want to help this station stay on the air, have at it because they, they can use it. And, uh, you know, we can't depend on the government for everything. We already learned that. That ain't going to happen. Now, times are tough. So if you want to help this station, please do so. And please come to church. If you don't like our church, please go to church somewhere. And trust God as your Savior. That'd be the best decision you've ever made in your life and the most important decision you'll ever make. I'll see you again at another time. Jeff, thanks for having me on the show. If y'all would, uh, over at the church at the next prayer meeting, uh, please remember all the county employees that are currently losing their jobs. You know, they're having to lay people off from the courthouse and stuff. So now it's even hitting those that did have secure jobs and things. So.
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and another point there, if some of them are kind of in the bind, the food pantry is available on Wednesdays at 1230. Food's given out. By all means, they probably, if they've been working for the city or the county all these years, they've probably missed a few church services or got out of touch with the Lord themselves. It would be a good time to reestablish that and, and thank the Lord for all those years that they did have to give. Probably some that way, and I'm sure there's a lot of good folks there that, that do just like it. Uh, God wants them to do too. But anyway, you're welcome to the food pantry and the church. Come visit with us. We'll show you that it's a loving church, and nobody's going to wring your arm. Nobody's going to run back during the service and say, oh, please come on up. And, and You know, we don't do that. You have your choice to make from the message. And we have a pastor that preaches right out of the Bible. See you. Well, Goodbye. That, Thank you very yeah, much. Anybody that knows me, they know that's what I like. If they ain't preaching out of the Bible, I'm walking out the back door. And even if they're preaching out of the Bible, if they're per burping it, I'm walking out of the back door. That's right. right. It's got to be the Word. Thank you very much, Daddy. Appreciate Thank you. you. Hey folks, we're going. To, I'm going to run that snow mobile to uh, uh, the three wise producing the three old ones. There we were. We were following an unseen light, and we created this. It's not meant to uh, make you mad. It's meant to uh, stir your heart and maybe uh, get you to send us a donation to keep some of that over here. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to feed that in momentary blank on the old blue screen here, and. Uh, Glow Lady and I, I know you can't see me, but I'm still here, folks. Glow Lady and I have been, uh, well, I had this wild idea in, uh, about uh, making a donation trailer for uh, the uh, community media center here in URTV. And I asked Miss Glow Lady if she would help me. Uh, it was totally my wild, crazy idea. So if y'all get mad, you can send me all the, the love or the hate mail. If you love me, send Glow Lady some love, too, to her and Jeff D. Cristofaro because he was very integral in helping us make this. It really was like the three wise people following an unseen light. But we hope you enjoy this. I want to pay attention to uh,
If you're out there and you're listening and watching us live, now give me a call here at 828-216-6922 and tell me what you think about that little trailer we just made there. I'm going to play it one more time. In fact, I might just play it five or six times until the end of the show. Hopefully, that will do its uh, desired results will happen from that. Uh, we're being very earnest. We're trying to raise donations to keep the station open here. As you know, our government, uh, both locally, statewide, and uh, the rest of the country, is in a severe capitalist crunch that was created by lots of greed, bad math, uh, poor company management and supervision, lack of regulation on the government's part to make sure that those people weren't just ripping us off of our money. Um, lots of issues. So everything that's government related or anything like that that uh, takes tax dollars or the money is funneled through the government in some capacity uh, it's been greatly affected. Like I say on the, uh, I believe it was WLO, what's the name over there, was reporting last night that they were actually laying off clerks in the courthouse now. So, see, had they listened to me four years ago, you know, well, who's Jeff Turner? Why should we listen to you? Well, you should listen to somebody because poor old Don Elton was telling me to do the same stuff, you know, and that little man Chris that was on TV before, you know, he was telling you about it all. That was people, key people, you know, us folks that live out here in it daily told you. We begged you to stop spending your money. We told you to stop throwing it away on frivolous items. Well, luckily, URTV is not really a frivolous item. In the first place, we pay our memberships over here. Each one of us pay a membership fee to be able to use the facilities to come back and, and do our thing. Uh, many of you... Um, enjoy our shows because you call us and tell you you know you do and and we know you're all crunched too you know we know that everybody's sitting here watching the jeff turner show ain't a rich man somewhere holed up with hordes of gold and cash laying around you're people just like we are so uh, for the station i ask you for a donation i told you i wouldn't ever ask for my own show you know i pay my own way up here but it seems that uh, the station may encounter difficulties with financing uh, let's face it they don't know how to back capitalism up you know there's a certain good time to run up and then there's a time to back off and uh, the leaders that we have although their hearts mean well they don't know nothing about running the government or checkbook. Because if they did, they wouldn't be writing checks in the red. They'd know better. they know, well, I'm responsible to the people. I can't write a check if we don't have the money. You know, it's not about who's at fault or who's to blame now. It's just we've got to get it all fixed. So if y'all are sending us some money, hopefully we can stay on the air. I personally would like to have the station right in the middle of the mall where all the life is happening and people are walking by, coming in and out of the door. You know, they got us stuck over here on this side of the city where it looks like just all the rest of the government institution. You know, and people don't like coming through this side of the tunnel looking at that courthouse and all that crap because it ain't been nothing but trouble for most of them. I think the station would thrive better in the middle of the Asheville Mall with 10,000 people walking around having a good time all day. If y'all think that, give me a call. I don't know what, we can't probably do nothing about that. They got a leisure or something, you know, but me, I'd walk. 
I've done have us down there in the middle of the action. You know what I'm saying? And there's enough room there where we could have live audiences. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you know, I'm the only one that thinks like a, uh, off the wall, let me say it that way. You know, there are people who say, Jeff, you're crazy. You think crazy, you know, nothing. You can't do this. And every time y'all told me I couldn't do something, I'm on here doing it. You can't win no election. Well, I did and almost did it twice. And that was without raising any money and robbing anybody. 22,000 something votes for us. Yeah, I know the people and the people know me. A lot of you don't. I'm a decent dude. I just have to take my word for it. You know what I'm saying? I may, I may look like, I don't know what, but I probably look like I escaped from one of the Stallone movies or something, you know. But anyway, I don't know what kind of time frame we got left here. I'll just check the old handy dandy. I got 10 minutes till. You know, I was looking at my mother's house the other day and I marred this old hymn book here. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to really change the deal Daddy had going here, so I think I'm going to try to pick this old hymn. I'll find my old guitar to pick it with. And I'm going to play the, play the promo one more time after I do this old song.
that and probably still in a few of the more modern songbooks too. But this one's come out of this songbook was copyrighted in 1951. It's a lot of the uh, stamp Baxter type songs that was used back then. And uh, of course, I always just, you know, I, I don't think I, I saw one hymn one in the old book I didn't like. There was a few I couldn't sing, you know, every once in a while. This kind of out of my range or out of my key or something. But But I can't find it. I had a uh, different uh, DVD that I was going to play for you. And I thought I brought it. In fact, I thought it was right here. But I guess it, it ain't right here. But if it was, it, it may have made it around. Yep, right here. Then we're going to have to. It's like I don't find all this. That's the way stuff happens around here. So, for the next few minutes, we'll just throw in the old outer space deal. No, I'm going to see if I can play it one more time. But here's the promo. Me and Glow Lady and Jeff D. Cristofaro put it together. It's my wild idea. If y'all like it, please donate. If you don't like it, you can blame me. 828-216-6922. I asked them for their help. And, uh, And that's that. I really don't know where that other one went. Let me just have a look. That's all it is. Say hello to my good friend Rick Crawford. If you're up there at the VA hospital, I'm saying you hello. I hope you, uh, hope you uh, give me a call there in a day or two. Let me know something. Uh, hello, Miss Harriet. All the folks over in Beaver Dam, Candler, Black Mountain, Swana, Noah, North Ashton, Lee Sester, Canton, Haywood County, Jackson County. All those good folks that's in and around and and living amongst us out there. We all going around each other all the time here in the Muffin County. So y'all have a good, safe day, have a good week. I think there's a holiday next week. I had a bunch of stuff to read you, but it was Sunday school lesson time. So I'll put that off till next week. I'm gonna try to turn out a show where you don't have to watch a rerun this time. So. Y'all be sure to send in a donation.